Hi, glad you're back. It's Maria from Still Dreaming Homestead. I have a new story for you today. It's called Isabella Wooly Catter Bear Wooly Bear Tiger Moss. I've seen this type of uh, woolly caterpillar before. And I'm going to tell you something that it, I was told about it. I was told that you could kind of predict the weather for the following winter by looking at this caterpillar. So you can see this is the head part, right, up here. And this is the tail. And so the black on both ends and brown in the middle. And what they say is, if the woolly caterpillar has more black by the head, the beginning of the winter will be harder and more cold. If the tail is more black, then the end of the winter time will be colder. I don't know if this is true, but I have fun looking for woolly caterpillars. A tiny caterpillar was coming out of a tiny round egg. She was the last caterpillar to hatch. Let's see if I can get this for you to see. From dozens of eggs glued to a mullein leaf. The eggs were stuck to the leaf so well that no matter what, they would not roll off. Even the very strong winds could not blow them off. I have mullein on my place. I should look and see if I have any caterpillar eggs on it. The tiny caterpillar was very hungry. She took a big bite of the leaf. It was not the right taste, so she humped down the leaf to find something better. She took tasting bites of several plants before she found one just with the right flavor. It was a large plantain leaf. The tiny caterpillar started up the leaf, eating all the way. All day, the little caterpillar ate the plantain. When the sun went down and the air became cool, she came down the plantain to look for a leaf to sleep under. It looks like she found one. I guess she was tired from all that eating. In the early morning, the little caterpillar went looking for the plantain again. A long narrow space, along a narrow space, she brushed close to a green spotted caterpillar. As soon as they started to pass, the light green caterpillar started to giggle. Hee <laughs> woolly bear. Oh, you tickle, woolly bear. Hee <laughs> The little caterpillar stopped and directed her 12 eyes, six on each side of her head, down the length of her furry brown body. She couldn't see very far, even with 12 eyes, but she could see the tip of her tail. It too was furry. You see her eyes, how they look? I'm awfully hairy, said the little caterpillar. I really am a woolly bear. I'm hungry too. And she hurried on. Woolly Bear was getting larger every day. What with all the plantain she ate. One day, right in the middle of a big juicy bite, she felt a strange sensation down her back. Her outer skin had gotten too tight. 
and now it was splitting. That's strange. My, that feels better, said Wooly Bear. I've been very uncomfortable. She pulled herself out of her outgrown coat and crawled slowly along the leaf, leaving her old skin behind. Can you see how it cracked open and, and is shedding off her? She's too big for it. Snakes do that too. Now that the woolly bear was getting so much bigger, it was much easier for hungry birds to see her. One day while she was crawling along, she noticed a dark shadow over her. Wooly Bear was so startled that she dropped right off the plantain leaf and rolled into a furry ball. I would too, that would be very scary. That bird would eat her up. It was a fortunate fall, for the shadow over the woolly bear was a big starling who really liked eating caterpillars. He looked for woolly bear, but he couldn't find her, for when she had curled up, she had also rolled under a leaf. In the days when the air was nippy and the leaves started to rustle, Wooly Bear decided to travel. Wooly Bear had gotten quite a way when she came to a great, huge, wide open space. It was really a super highway with cars and trucks whizzing up and down. Wooly Bear hurried along with a plantain on her mind. I don't think that's a very safe place for her. When she was halfway across the highway, the wheel of a big grain truck came very close to crushing Wooly Bear. The rush of air from the big tire blew her up into the air and tumbled her across the highway to the other side. Wooly Bear found such strenuous traveling very tiring. See that? The wind from there blew her up. I was lucky she didn't get squished. Wooly Bear crawled into a rusty tin can and fell asleep. This time she slept for many days before the once warm sun woke her up. Then she nibbled on a little bit of plantain. Soon she was asleep again. Wooly Bear spent most of the winter curled up in a ball asleep. Only the warmest, sunshiniest days could bring her out to eat. Kind of hibernating like a bear. Spring came and the plantain grew green and tender. Wooly Bear loved the warm sun and fresh plantain. She grew fatter and furrier. Although the sun was shining, even the ground was warm. One day, although the sun was shining and even the ground was warm, Wooly Bear began to feel sleepy. She crawled into a crack and began spinning a soft blanket around herself. Huh, I guess that's what that is. Inside the soft cocoon blanket, Wooly Bear grew still. Then she began to change. A few days, Wooly Bear pushed her way out of the cocoon she was indeed different. Wooly Bear wasn't a Wooly Bear anymore. Look what she'd become. She had two beautiful dark yellow forewings, that's front wings, with a spot in the middle of each one. She had two beautiful pinkish yellow hind wings 
with black specks. Her body was golden brown with three rows of neat black spots. There she was. She had changed. They call that type of change metamorphosis. Can you say that word? Metamorphosis. I really need a new name, she thought. Wooly Bear was a very good name when I was a furry caterpillar. But now I'm a beautiful moth. Isabella Tiger Moth is a beautiful name, she thought. That's who I am. And she spread her wings to dry. Now she's ready to fly off. That was very interesting to find how we get moths. What they start off with is a little egg and then a caterpillar that eats and eats and eats and grows and grows and grows until it's time to metamorphose or change. And it puts that little cocoon around it just like a tight little blanket. And when it comes out, it's not a caterpillar anymore. It's a, that's right, a moth. Wow. Well, that was a good, good story. I liked that one. I'll be back with you tomorrow to read another story. It'll be a Bible story tomorrow. So I look forward to that. I want to say I love you. I really do. But even more important, God loves you. He always will. All right. Good night. And God bless you.